Yes, that's right. We killed our heater. After three short years in van life, we had to replace this thing. And in that time, we've learned a few things. So we're going to share those with you now so that maybe your heater will last you longer. First off, diesel is not a real clean burning fuel. So you need to run this thing on high. We had no idea. So our van would heat up quickly and we would turn the thermostat down and just let this maintain a constant temperature in here. And it would smolder for like the first 18 months that we had it. No idea that once a week you should crank this thing up on high, hit your thermostat up to about 80 or 90 degrees and just let this thing rock for about 30 to 45 minutes. If you do that, you'll probably have better luck than we did. Number two, we had no idea, but our heater required a high altitude kit. Now, not all of them do, but you'll want to check yours. And if it requires a high altitude kit, make sure you install that before you go up to high altitude. Now, we were up at the Rocky Mountains. We were at ski areas, heating the van up and then letting this thing smolder at high altitude, which is even worse. There's not enough oxygen at high altitude to fully burn all of the fuel in the combustion chamber if this thing is running normal. You need the high altitude kit to send a correspondingly smaller dose of fuel into the burn chamber. Then the oxygen can burn it all. Live and learn. <laughs> Finally, the third thing, once a year, you have to fully take this thing apart and service it or take it into the shop and let them service it for you. I'll show you how to do it in this video, but we had no idea. So this thing went three years before we ever fully serviced it. And by then it was too late. So next I'm going to show you how to do all of that service. But real quick, I want to say first, if you've been watching our previous videos on this heater, we have a mini series going already. And if you've been doing any of those things that we've mentioned, rest assured your heater's fine doing those is not going to kill it. It's not because of anything we did in those videos that this heater died. In fact, it's because we didn't do those things enough or soon enough. So if you've been doing all of that stuff, you're, you're doing fine. Now I'm going to show how to redo all of that stuff because I got the heater out now. I can show you much more easily than I did in those previous videos because I can show you real close up all the different parts you need to look at. So let's get to it. But first, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Epic Water Filters. Epic is a company out of Boulder, Colorado, and they are on a mission to reduce single-use plastic waste. And the way they're doing that is by going after bottled water. Bottled water, you drink a bottle of water and you throw it away. There's plastic everywhere. So Epic makes a bunch of different water filtration products. And the one that we are the most excited about being outdoor people who like to hike is this one right here. Anywhere you find fresh water, like a lake, a river, a stream, you've got all the fresh, safe drinking water you could want. So we're super excited about that. Check them out. We'll put a link in the description below. And if you use the coupon code TSLTD20, you can get 20% off your first order. So check them out. And now back to the heater video. Okay, I'm going to show you three of the things we did in two previous videos that we did to service this heater. But first, I know what you're thinking. If we had no idea that this thing needed to be serviced, why would we be servicing it? Well, let me clarify that. We had no idea this thing needed to be fully serviced once a year, even when it was working fine. And by fully serviced, I mean taken out of the van and torn completely apart all the way down to the burn chamber, replace the gaskets, replace the screens and that sort of thing. We did, however, know something was wrong because after 18 months, this thing started failing to start up. What it would do is it would make two attempts to start up and fail both times. And luckily for us, on the third attempt, it would seem to start up. But that was becoming more and more common. And the way we knew that was happening was obviously we could hear an attempt to start up and fail. It's trying. It's cold air coming out. But also, we had white smoke belching out of the exhaust pipe. We could see white smoke billowing along the side of the van out the window here. And so we knew something wasn't right. 
So we got online, looked around, did some research, and we discovered several of the things you can do in that situation are replace your fuel filter in the fuel pump. So we're going to show you that. You can replace the atomizer screen inside the heater itself, and you can replace the igniter or glow plug. So those are things that we did a number of times and we made a couple of videos about to show how to do those. But since we have the heater out, I'm going to show you again how to do that. And then we'll also take the thing completely apart, which we'd never done before. And I'll show you that as well. Replacing the fuel filter is one of the easier things to do because you just need access to the fuel pump. You don't need to access the heater itself, which in our case is located underneath the passenger seat. And it's kind of a big deal to remove the seat and get down to the heater. So this is really simple. It's mounted outside the vehicle right near our fuel tank. It's just ahead of the fuel tank on the chassis on the bottom of the van, kind of right behind the driver's seat. And the fuel filter is right inside this end of it. And the easiest way to get in there, especially if this thing's mounted, because it's going to be on a rubber boot, a rubber thing that absorbs shock, you need a 17 millimeter wrench. But if you just start cranking on this guy here, it's on really tight. And it's going to be hard to turn. You're going to feel like you're breaking that rubber mount. So what I do is I grab a 12 millimeter wrench as well. And you can put that right on the shaft that this thing mounts to. And then if you position your 17 millimeter wrench about like this, you can squeeze like that. And that's an easy way to get this thing loose. Then this thing will come right off. And as soon as you start loosening this, diesel is going to be going everywhere. That's why you want to wear grubbies. Now I came up with a little trick to stop that diesel. When you pull the fuel hose off of this end, take a screwdriver bit and jam it into the end of that hose and tighten it up, that'll keep that fuel from dripping all over you. Once you take this off, you can see the fuel filter is right there. It looks just like this. It's a little tiny plastic thing. And it is extremely difficult to get it out of here. You're gonna want some picks. So these are precision picks. I've got an angled pick like this. And basically, you just want to get in there and do whatever you can to get this thing to come out. You will probably destroy the filter as you do that. But basically, that's what you do. You just wedge that thing out of there. You might have to use a straight pick and go down along the edges here. But whatever you can do to get that thing out, that's what you got to do. Then, all you do is you take your new fuel filter and you just drop it right back in there with the little rim of this thing on the outside and the, the screen towards the inside. Put your fuel fitting back on, tighten it up again with both wrenches, pop your screwdriver bit out of the fuel hose, put the fuel hose on here, tighten it up, and you're good to go. That is a real simple operation. The only problem is getting diesel dripped all over you while you're doing it. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how to do the atomizer screen. This can be done with the heater still mounted inside the van. You don't have to remove it like it is here. And let me tell you real quick, you may notice this doesn't look like your heater. This probably does. The new one we bought did not have the cover on this end. So I had to take the cover off this, our old heater, and put it on the new one when we installed it. But basically this end of the heater looks very similar to this end except instead of this cap it has a hose coming off and that's where the hot air blows out of this thing into your living space at this end you take this cap and give it about a quarter turn and it just comes right off and then at this end right here on the bottom side there are a couple of clips that you just lift up like that they should snap up and then you can remove this cap and now you can see inside the first thing we're going to do is remove this electronic control module. For that, we need a T20 Torx. Remove that screw. The next thing you want to do is lift up on this rubber boot where the control wires go in. And it just fits into this little gap down here. Then you want to squeeze these tabs together while you're lifting the control unit and it'll just pop right up just like that 
And what we're going to do here is get inside this guy. This is where the atomizer screen and the igniter are. And the way you get in there is get under this rubber boot, then carefully hold the brown and white wires and push the boot towards them. You want to make sure you hold those wires because you do not want to break them off the end of this igniter. Once you've got that boot out of the way, you can unplug the igniter from the electronic control unit. And you don't need to worry about which direction this was plugged in because it can only plug back in one way because it's got a little cutout on the side of the plug here. Once you've got this out of the way, take the tool that came with your igniter. You want to put the slot in this direction so that this brown wire that's kind of coming off the side of the igniter is off to that side away from the slot. And you just push it down and it'll go right on there and you can see the wires come out the side. Then take a screwdriver, put it through the holes on the removal tool, give it a quick little turn and it's loosened up. That's all it takes. And then you can remove the thing just like this. Take the socket off and there's your igniter. So you want to inspect this very carefully. You may not have to replace this. You can take some sandpaper and clean this up, get it so it's nice and clean. If it's covered with gunk, then you probably want to replace it. Next, we'll get the atomizer screen out. Now, there's no way to get this out without destroying it. But let me show you how it fits in there. This is the replacement atomizer screen and the tool to set the new one back in place. This is what the atomizer screen looks like. It's just a little tiny screen like that. It's got three welded points on the side, which will tell you about in a minute but basically this fits very tightly inside a little cylinder you're gonna want a straight pick like this what I want to do is get the end of my pick on the outside of the atomizer screen but on the inside of the cylinder that it's stuck in and shove it down in there and work it inward just like this so right there you can see that I've dented the edge inward and now you need a pair of needle nose pliers, not long nose pliers. A standard pair of six inch long nose pliers is not gonna work. You cannot get it in here. So I had to go buy some needle nose pliers specifically for this. You're gonna wanna get one side of your pliers inside the atomizer screen, the other side on the outside of the screen, right where you bent it with that pick. And you're gonna pull it out like that. And it will take some effort. You might have to twist it like that. Now, this one actually is pretty clean. This one we just replaced not long before we replaced the heater itself. So this one is not too bad. But the first time we did this, this was so black and charred and covered with soot, it was like, no wonder it wasn't working. Once you get that out of there, you're gonna want a little wire brush like this. And you're going to go inside of here and up and down and up and down as much as you can to get as much of that soot out of that little cylinder. Also, you're going to want a right angle pick like this guy. And you want to go down inside of here with it, with the pick facing down, until you can feel it go through the hole on the side wall of that cylinder. And wiggle it around as much as you can inside of that. All of the air that enters the combustion chamber in this heater goes through that little tiny hole on the side of this cylinder. You gotta make sure that thing's clean. Once you finish that, hit it with the brush again. Now this is a procedure that's relatively easy to do a couple of times a year. I would recommend getting a pack of replacement atomizer screens and get yourself a couple of extra igniters as well. Once you've done this, we're pretty much done. The next thing you do is you take the install tool that came with your atomizer screen. You put your new atomizer on there. Make sure these little welds are facing away from the hole that we just cleaned out. So make sure the welds are facing this direction because if you put it in with those welds, if one of them is right where that hole is, it's gonna plug it up and no air is gonna get in. So put the welds facing up 
and then just shove this down in there and as soon as it stops that new screen is seated you can pull the tool out and now you just put everything back together just the opposite of what you took apart now once a year you're going to have to actually remove this thing from the van now most of these are installed like in a sprinter van for instance under the pedestal of the passenger seat so you're, you're going to want to get under the van right behind the front tire and look up and find where this is you will see an exhaust pipe coming off of here it's held on with a hose clamp so you need a screwdriver to remove that same thing with the air intake there will be a hose on the intake with a hose clamp you unscrew that hose clamp pull that guy off you will have the fuel inlet coming here there should be a short length of rubber tubing very similar to what was on the pump you're going to want to remove that and then again make sure you have a screwdriver bit ready put that on that fuel hose and tighten it up to keep that diesel from dripping everywhere and then there's four nuts that you'll see these are stainless steel so they should be relatively clean i was surprised at how easy these came off with our van after everything we've been through but once you remove those four nuts and everything else is disconnected then it's a pretty simple matter to just lift this thing out from under the passenger seat so once you've got it out of the van remember there's going to be a cover on here you're going to put a flat blade screwdriver into this little slot and give it a twist and that'll pop that cover off then you can go ahead and do your atomizer screen do your igniter just like i just showed you and you can also take your electronic control module completely off and again every one of these plugs will only go back in one direction so you don't need to worry about exactly how they came out because they've got little slots on the sides there's the electronic control module once you've got that out take this gasket off the bottom and then this whole thing will come out of that housing and now we need a t25 torx and you remove these four screws around the sides of this thing okay once you've removed those four screws this end will come off and probably break your gasket <laughs> so make sure that you've picked up a gasket kit all of this stuff's going to be linked below in the description next there's three screws in here these are t25s as well you want to remove those once you've got those out you can then begin pulling the burn chamber out of the housing and there's a rubber boot on the side where the fuel hose goes into the burn chamber you need to pull that up with it and there's your burn chamber now right here on this side you can see that hole i was talking about again i'll show you this is where the atomizer screen goes and this is that hole that you want to make sure is very clean there's a gasket in here you have to replace that one as well and then inside here this is where you want to just really start cleaning so in our research online we found a guy who does a lot of heater maintenance and he uses brake clean and so we thought we'd give it a try i don't know there may be something else that would work better but this stuff worked great for us if you just spray it in there real good you probably want to do this outdoors or in the garage or somewhere and then using this brush and a toothbrush and whatever kind of wire brushes you can get that'll fit in here with brake clean all over it you just clean 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 get this chamber as clean as you can go ahead and hit this with some brake clean clean that up again now that you've got it out of the heater where you can actually work with it it's easier to do and also try to get in here as well hopefully this part is not going to be too carboned up for you then once everything is clean and the brake clean has dried or evaporated you take your new gaskets they will only go one direction so you can't put them backwards and you just the reverse of how you took this thing apart position this thing over here with the boot going down that slot put the screws back in okay also very important if you've got residue left over from the gasket that broke that's got to be cleaned off you're going to want a gasket scraper or some kind of rigid scraper 
and you want to clean that off of here. You can see I've got some right there. This all has to come off or your new gasket will not seal properly. And then take your other new gasket and put it on. Again, it will only go in one direction. And then you just put everything back together. And you'll see there's only one direction this can fit so that everything lines up nicely. Put the screws back in. Okay, once those are good and tight, you can put this back into its housing with the burn chamber going first, just like that. Make sure these wires are up and out of the way. Put the gasket back on. That'll help hold the plastic housing in place. Grab your electronic control module and start plugging things back together. Replace your igniter. When you tighten up the igniter, just be aware it does not need to be very tight at all. Just a quick little turn like that, just to get it seated in there tightly. Then you can hold these wires very carefully again and pull the boot back and push the boot back down inside. Just like that. Plug the igniter back into the control module now to put the control module back on, you want to put these little thin wires through this little tab on the side of it right here. Just like that. The wires that go to the igniter can stay out, but hold your thumb on this to keep those thin wires on there. And then as you put it down in there, make sure and feed this back into the slot on the side of the housing here. Push it down and you should hear a snap when these clips engage. Then you grab your screw. This is the T20 screw. Tighten it back up. Then grab your cover and notice that it has this little lip on it. That lip fits underneath this edge of the housing. Like that. You push it till it's tight and then snap it down. Make sure it's going down tight into this slot where this wire comes out and then once you get it all the way down you push these tabs back and you should hear them snap like that now the cover is back and then you take this little guy put it back on give it a quarter turn and you're done so I think our failure to do all of this stuff really contributed to this heater's early demise. But one thing I forgot to mention earlier, I think the final nail in the coffin for this poor thing was we were off grid last winter for about two weeks. We never plugged into shore power and we weren't driving very far. And without realizing it, our battery voltage got kind of low and it was chilly we were running this thing all the time and our battery voltage was down to about 11.2 and the motor on this thing the fan motor started sounding really funny it would speed up and slow down and speed up and it just sounded sick it sounded like it was on <laughs> death's door which it was and I think we could have replaced the electronic control module but that thing cost 350 bucks. We didn't want to gamble that and then find out, no, it was something else. But I think that was the final nail in the coffin. So in addition to running this thing on high, keeping it really hot and burning that carbon, get the high altitude kit if you needed, and also get it serviced regularly. I think in addition to that, you also want to avoid running this thing on low voltage. Make sure your battery voltage is up to 12, 13 volts where it should be. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please give a thumbs up. That would really help us out. And subscribe because we do lots of videos like this. And once you've subscribed, ring the bell and you'll be notified anytime we put up a new video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.